This is an Ex Volante production. Ex Volante to Mars and beyond. Hello, everyone. My name is Ina Wonka, and I'm a founder of Ex Volante, a consulting and visionary company focused on experiential innovation. We help decision makers prepare for the future. So before we start, close your eyes. Imagine it is a summer night and you are looking at the sky and you see a falling star. How do you feel? Humans have always looked up at the sky with curiosity. We have long desired to understand space. Until this point, outer space has been unaffordable and inaccessible. But now there is a way many people can be part of space explorations and even live forever. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Ben Haldeman, who is the founder of LifeShip, to chat about space, life, and how we can go to moon and possibly Mars. So before we start, Ben, I would like if you share with you your background and tell us what excites you about space. Thanks, Zena. Thrilled to be here. Yeah, I've... I've been working on space things for about 20 years. I worked on uh, instruments to go to Mars to look for life on Mars. I worked on lots of big sat- big telescopes to look for new planets around other star system, star systems. And then I worked on, I was at a company, Planet Labs, and we built over 300 satellites to go to space and record the Earth. So my my background's all been uh, using space to help Earth and looking for other places where life could have been or could potentially go in the future. As I started working on satellites to go to space, I also got my blood, sweat, and tears on these satellites and sent them up there and then knew my DNA was floating around in space. And I, I, I wanted to help other people uh, be connected with space and be, be part of this excitement of doing things in space. This is amazing because when I was a kid, I was, I was gazing at the sky and I was imagining like living on a different planet. But today my dream, it seems like it can become a reality. So let's deep dive into the discussion for today. Tell us a little bit about your company, the story of your company, LifeShip. So LifeShip, what we're doing is it's, it's a big mission to save a copy of Earth's DNA, of humanity's DNA, uh, and other species, and then save this across the solar system and then beyond. And so the big vision is to both save a backup copy of Earth and to uh, start to send little seeds of life out, out, out to other star systems. And uh, so that what we have here on Earth and uh, with our biosphere and with, with humanity and the diversity of species here, that that essentially lasts forever is the, is the goal, is that in some form we save a forever copy of, of life here. And so our first actual mission is uh, we're sending a little time capsule to the moon with DNA of all different plants and animals and then people as well. And so we have a, a consumer kit for, for around $100 where people can add their DNA and be part of this mission to the moon. Well, that's amazing because basically your company is making uh, space and also the moon affordable. And we know that transportation has always been an issue, space transportation, right? So can you tell us why the moon? Yeah, the moon's actually becoming easier to get to. Uh, there's a number of missions going there over the next few years. So it's suddenly accessible when it has been very inaccessible for a long time. There's like probably six different commercial landing companies that are, that are sending uh, landers to the moon over the next year. The moon just has a special connection for humanity and and the earth over, over time. Like our ancestors has, have looked in it. It's like the most prominent thing in the sky by and besides the sun. So it's something where you, you can have a piece of you and look up and it's it's uh, we, we already have this special connection to it. Uh, right. And it's if we were to need this DNA, it's it's kind of the closest place we could put it and get it back. Like we could leave some in orbit, but if if you're looking for an object to put it on, it's kind of the most logical uh, backup away from Earth. Then you are fulfilling my dream. But I do believe that sending DNA to the moon could create this very special bond for people. Everybody has gazed at the moon and it could make the distance between the moon and 
you know, and, and uh, the earth seems shorter. So I have a question. Do you think sending DNA to the moon will make people more curious about what's out there? It opens up a wonder and a curiosity and makes, makes it accessible. And, um, and with, with DNA, DNA also, like it's, your, it's the code of you. It's your blueprint. So it kind of also this bridges both space as in, okay, it's physically going somewhere else, but it's also time because it's, it's like, oh, could I potentially come back on another world someday? Um, and so it like opens up that imagination and kind of brings, brings these sci-fi futuristic concepts like down to earth in a way and real and personal and like connected to a person. That's absolutely amazing. Let me ask you, because we're talking about DNA, um, how do you deal with some of the privacy issues of DNA samples? We're not even sequencing the DNA. You get a kit, you send in a saliva sample, and then we take that literal sample and we, we extract your DNA and we send it up to the moon. So we, we don't even, yeah, we don't know your ACTG, like genetic code, um, and we don't otherwise share or do, do anything else with your DNA. So I, I think that's the, the, the main way is we're avoiding actually knowing your data or your information. That's amazing. So, I mean, just sending a, a, a biosignature to the different planets open up a new commercial opportunity and market for entrepreneurs. I mean, do you have a sense of what like this market opportunity might be? Who are the people who might be drawn into it? We have over a thousand people going on this already. Um, and I've been shocked with the the breadth of interest that draw people into this. And we, we have anywhere from like <laughs> parents sending newborns or like kids to, to like 80, 90 year olds. And, uh, and I'd say like the, the, the kids and the younger is more like um, excitement about space and the future and, and being part of something. And then, and I guess that's for the older as well, but uh, people come this also come at this also about leaving a legacy or leaving a permanent record of themselves, um, and then also many families are doing it, and we even have kids for for pets, and so there's families that'll all five of them and their two cats go together, and they get to look up at the moon the rest of their life and know they're all connected no matter where they are. So um, yeah, people come at it from like a pure science sci-fi tech side or like just like a a spiritual wonder about the moon and the cosmos. That's amazing because I think a lot of people are inspired by really reaching to the infinite and really connecting with one of the planet. And the moon, we said, is really right here, very uh, close to Earth. So I'm very excited about this kit. So I have to order one. Let's talk a little bit about Mars. NASA is landing a rover on Mars in February. And this is very exciting. Does your company plan to send DNA to Mars? Yeah, Mars is a little trickier, both because it's harder to get to and because we're actively looking for life on Mars. And so there's, we, we would need to be a little more protective of, of how we, what sort of capsule we would send, how we, uh, how we save DNA, how, how we do it. Um, but it's definitely in the plan. And, um, where the moon's easier because NASA has also already cleared that biological missions can go to the moon. Whereas, whereas Mars, there's a lot more protection that needs to happen. But really DNA, it's, it's an inert, inert molecule and you'd be hard pressed to find a scientist who'd say that like life could spontaneously happen out of DNA. Like you, need, you need a living organism for that to happen. So um, yeah, definitely as, uh, as the commercial opportunities to get, to get things to Mars open up, then we'd love to be on the first commercial payload to, to Mars for sure. Mars is a special place. It is a very special place. It is a very special place. Um, and I was going to ask you, what is the bigger vision for your company? But you have mentioned that Mars is on the roadmap. Anything else that you want to share with us? I'd say that the bigger vision is to save copies of Earth and humanity all across the solar system and then send these to the stars and then 
if you're using your wild imagination and thinking long term, then you know, eventually maybe we could add some sort of synthetic biology into it that is made to act like a seed and crash into a new planet and actually spark a new world there and, and grow new life and start start the whole evolutionary process on another world. Um, and and you know, maybe eventually there's a way to even uh, seed something intelligently where uh, a, a little seed crashes into a planet and then eventually humans grow out of it or... Um, or life evolves human humanity intelligently. And who knows, that might even be why we're here. Like something may have been sent here and that grew humans essentially, and or grew life in a planet to the point where it could where it could have humans. Um, so yeah, it's it's like it, it like opens up that infinite possibility of okay, how do we spread life and eventually uh, spread humanity in beyond the solar system. This is amazing. It's so fascinating. Uh, you have such an exciting company and mission. Um, I was wondering, because this is part of the evolution, but there is another angle I was thinking about. Uh, well, if we think about sending DNA, right, to another planet, do you think we can establish some form of communication with the, with the DNA uh, that you're sending with another intelligent lives if they discover the DNA? Is there a way they can learn or they can start communicating with us somehow? It's possible. We could. We can definitely. So we're partnered with an organization called Arc Mission, and Arc Mission's mission is to uh, back up all of human knowledge as well. And so we are uh, the one on the moon has. It's like a Rosetta Stone for humanity and knowledge, and so it, it does give like. An introduction to humanity and everything we important we save about us and human culture and so um, perhaps that's that's a way to then communicate and uh, and eventually as we're sending these out there yes we could have information with them and uh, maybe quantumly there's the way to communicate or may, maybe there I've, I've seen people um, propose that eventually we could we could send some sort of seed or something to another planet that is then made to use some of the resources of the planet um, and then grow up some sort of receiver that then we could communicate with and then send information print life from that and send send and maybe that's a path towards teleporting to somewhere you're opening the possibilities to the infinite here so um, I'm very excited. Um, and my next question is, do you think we're alone in the universe? I think it's highly unlikely. I, I think there's, there's probably lots of life out there. Um, intelligent life, there's likely some in our galaxy, but uh, I'm, I'm sure in other galaxies there very likely is. Um, but it definitely is spread very thinly b between. And um, yeah, and I, th I think we have as conscious life on an incredible planet, I do feel like we have an obligation to the universe to help continue the existence of, of conscious life. And so, um, yes, we have like so much to take care of here on earth. And that's that's something I'm passionate about as well. And I also feel like we have this long-term obligation to ensure the existence of life. And, and so that, that space, space becomes important and it's not something that we just can say, oh, we'll do that later. It's something that we're, we, do, we do along with taking care of Earth. It's part of our existence as well. And many of the technologies and inventions uh, for space can be used also here on Earth for many different uh, reasons, right? In medicine, satellites are used for, you know, um, data storage or uh, for communication. So um, I think definitely we cannot ignore space. Now we make it more tangible. But let me ask you this question. If you, let's say, what would you ask an alien if you happen to meet one? Jeez, I don't know. What would you ask? I would say, hi, how are you? <laughs> this was my question. Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, I think this is a uh, interesting question. And who knows? Um, I mean, we call it alien intelligent lives, but those are kind of definition that are used in books and movies or 
you know, in, uh, in, in sci-fi stories. Um, but I think as humans, we're curious. So we would be, hi, or how are you if we're friendly, right? <laughs> So well, that's very unusual, but anyway, um, it has been very fun, fun to talk about with you about space life and how we can make uh, the moon more accessible to many people. Now to close the discussion, can you tell me in one sentence, uh, what are some of the space initiatives you are most excited in 2021? Well, we're, we're on a moon lander that's planned for fall of this year. And that mission is Astrobotic. Um, and that's, that's a, a, a moon lander built in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it launches uh, on, a, on a ULA Vulcan rocket out of Cape Canaveral in the fall of this year. And so we'll, yeah, we'll have about a thousand people on it and about 500 species of plants and animals. And um, I'm excited about that. And then, and then I'm excited about the the Mars rovers that are headed headed to Mars and will be landing soon. And um, and uh, James Webb Space Telescopes. I'm excited about that for sure. So I think 2021, I believe, will be a better year, more exciting year uh, for all of us. And I'm looking forward to uh, order uh, a few of your kits because I want to live forever, and now we can make it happen. Now, finally, can you tell us how we can reach, uh, reach you and your company? A little bit of information to share with us. So our website is lifeship.com and you can check that out. You can order kids there. Love to hear from people that this resonates with. And um, yeah, ex excited to connect lots of people to space and the stars and the moon and Mars and, um, and bridge, bridge humanity across time. Thank you, Ben. This was amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. This has been an Ex Volante production. To spark your imagination and to think beyond the known, visit exvolante.com and make sure to listen to the Life on Mars podcast, a six-part series that explores what a journey to Mars might look like. Listen to Life on Mars wherever you download your favorite podcasts and follow us on social media at Exvolante.